Mark Washburn here from PondAlgaeSolutions.com, and this week I want to talk a little bit about pH in your pond. Uh, now we could go into elaborate detail and talk a lot about scientific jargon uh, when we talk about pH, but this week we'll try to keep it simple and, and hopefully useful for you with regards to pH and how it relates to your pond. pH represents the concentration of hydrogen ions in the water. Uh, we use a scale to measure pH and the scale runs from 0 to 14. Anything from uh, 6.99 on down to 0 would be considered acidic. Anything from 7.01 to 14 is considered alkaline. 7.0 obviously is considered absolutely neutral. All ponds have a certain pH reading and many of them run uh, quite often somewhere between about 6.5 sometimes up to about 9.0 and what's interesting is each one of those numbers 7.0 to 8.0 to 9.0 represent a tenfold increase in pH um, anything from 7.0 up to 8.5 is very safe that's quite common and, and we see this a lot in many ponds uh, there's several ways that you can check pH we uh, use a very small dip strip. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a color-coded strip. There's also a color key here, and what you do is dip this in the water for about a second or two, pull it out, and then compare it to the color chart. Now this particular strip reads more than pH. We include these uh, free with every order of our uh, biological product because we believe that a neutral pH or something closer to neutral actually helps uh, the performance of a beneficial bacteria. Um, so we include that with, uh, with every order. Now another way that you can check pH is through a, a digital meter like this one. This is made by HANA. Best place to find these, believe it or not, is on ebay.com. We picked this one up for about $24 and it does a very commendable job. It's digital, very precise, uh, needs to be calibrated from time to time so you need a neutral solution to do that but it's, it's a useful tool if you want to keep track of pH. A pH is, is somewhat important um, because, and particularly for fish owners, for koi owners and stuff like that, uh, when you have a relatively high pH, something, let's say, uh, above 8.0, and you have high temperatures, that can increase the toxicity of ammonia in your pond. And ammonia levels are something you definitely want to monitor routinely if you have fish, and pH can certainly affect that. Um, you can certainly find areas of the country where pH varies and I believe it or not I'm not a fan of trying to adjust pH into a perfect 7.0 level uh, there's no reason to do that and that in actual fact pH will fluctuate throughout the day in almost every pond um, you will also find pH increasing as you have more uh, growth more vegetative growth because plants will give off carbon dioxide and release that into the water. That will raise the pH within the water. So what we found is as you reduce algae masses, uh, unwanted aquatic growth, oftentimes if you have a pH, a high pH in conjunction with that, the pH will adjust downward because of that reduction. Um, generally fish can tolerate uh, and most aquatic creatures can tolerate pH uh, up to about 8.5 and some do quite well at 9.0 but once you get beyond that it can get to be a pretty harmful level. Another thing that you'll find people talk about and this is just a word of warning, there are pH adjusters um, and it, I found it much uh, easier to raise a pH if I run into a pond that has a very low pH and they want to try a bacteria uh, you want to increase the buffering capacity um, of the pond too to avoid these wide fluctuations in pH so it's good to raise the pH up to a more neutral position if you find a very low reading but ultimately I found it's much easier to raise the pH than it is to lower the pH with fish uh, involved when you lower the pH you want to do so very very gradually and rapid changes are something that they generally can't tolerate although you will find some very gradual fluctuations in nature um, on a daily basis so um, pH is an important component of your pond. I honestly believe it's not uh, necessarily worth trying to adjust physically in most cases. You sort of have to take what you get. But if you find that 
uh, you have some pond plants that aren't doing very well. Uh, maybe you have some algae growth and also you're trying to compete with uh, that algae with beneficial plants, but they're not doing very well. You might want to check the pH of the water and see if it's high because many plants don't grow well in a very high pH. So uh, I know that's kind of a roundabout way to, to cover this whole topic, and there's a lot more that we could discuss with, with regards to pH. But uh, in simple terms, it's an important thing to know uh, where it stands in your pond because it can uh, determine what you use, uh, when you use it in terms of treatments uh, for various problems. It's certainly a beneficial thing to know if you have fish and, uh, and certainly something that can affect the number of issues regarding the fish population, ammonia levels being one of them, and also beneficial plants. So a good thing to know. Um, certainly if you have any other questions or any other uh, tips on pH and dealing with issues that revolve around pH, you can post those right below here. Uh, we'll have a commentary section on our blog, and uh, I look forward to anything you might have to add. So I hope you find this video useful. Uh, you can visit us at pondalgesolution.com anytime. We'll always try to be helpful with your pond issues, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care.